An execute SQL task inside of a for each loop can really, really do a ton of stuff for you. Um, one of the scenarios we're going to take a look at later in the course is how to process every text file in a folder. So you have a folder full of .txt, .csv, .dat, whatever, and you need to load them up using a data transformation task or a bulk insert task. But what you also need is you need to store in an auditing table the fact that this particular file was loaded on this date with the correct number of rows. Or if there were errors, you need to have that information logged. Well, I'm not going to cover the data flow part of it yet because we got to get into expressions first which is up, coming up, I promise, in just a couple of videos. Um, but I will show you how to go ahead and use the execute SQL task to supply that kind of auditing information. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to create a folder with a bunch of text files in it. And they're going to be empty, but that doesn't really matter. Um, so here's like, you know, customers 2009, 11, 20. Um, you know, maybe you've got an iterative set in here. Maybe you've got some application that writes these out. And we'll just finish with this one. Where'd you go? You know, on a per day basis. And looks like I have. That's what I messed up there. So what we want to do in our SSIS package, let's just try to type it up here. So step... Um, the goal is load up every text file rows into the database and audit which files were loaded in a table. Okay, make sense? So what we're going to do, we're going to create a table to support the auditing here. So I'm going to do like a table that kind of looks like this. So um, we'll call this table um, processing file processing history and we'll have like a couple of things like maybe a um, oops, sorry an ID column a date processed file name number of error rows um, number of errors you know whatever else you might want package ID and other uh, audit information uh, here, but that's kind of the basics. So let's go ahead and create this this particular table. And I'm going to launch my management studio. So I'm going to use the learnitfirst.com database and say create table file processing history and ID will be a, an identity column. Uh, we'll make it the primary key and then we'll have a file name and that'll be non-null and process date. You know, that's good enough, I think. Well, we don't have the other information uh, just yet. Okay. So I'll save this so that I don't forget to include it in my video. Um, what was this, 04? Uh, so, good to go. Empty table. All right, so now let's bring SSIS into play. So let's create a new package. And, you know, to, to accurately do this, we're going to have to have a couple of things. I'm going to have an, a for each loop container that loops through every file in that folder. So I need my for each file enumerator. And so I go grab that folder, text files, and let's say that we're only looking, I'm going to show you how to do these masks again. I know I've shown you before, but it starts with customers. Um, I'll keep it simple. So what I'm saying is that we're going to go through every file in the text files folder that starts with customers and ends in a .txt extension. So the file names that we have in here will work just fine. However, let's put one that would not work. Let's, sorry. 
let's put a file that is just named potato. <laughs> I, I'll see if potato <laughs> will be loaded. Uh, okay. We'll, what do you want to do? Do you want to get the fully qualified file name? Nah. I want to just get the name and extension. Okay. Now, if you will remember from our discussion at the beginning of the chapter with the for each loop, when we go to variable mappings, we make us a new string variable. We'll do it at the for each loop level. And it's called file name. And that's going to map to the file name. So index 0 in a for each files iterator, enumerator, is the actual value that you chose. Sorry to flip back and forth. But whatever you chose here is index 0. So since we chose name and extension, that's what's going to be in there. Okay, cool. Well, now let's bring forth our execute SQL task. Wire her up to a SQL connection. And I'm going to use the native client. VentureWorks 2008. And we'll do direct input just to make it simple. Uh, we want to insert into the file processing history. And we'll do the file name process date. And, oh man, what was it? That was it, right? Because we let it auto generate the ID. Yeah, file name and process date. And the values are, oh, actually, you know, we already have a default set for the process date. So we just need to put in the file name. So now we're passing in a parameterized query. We are using OLEDB, so we must use a parameter marker that is a question mark. Say OK. And I now map that parameter with this horrible screen. And I say that I want the variable file name to be an input param. And it is of a type wide string. So let's back it out here in varcar. And it's 0. Remember, that's your OLEDB. It's a 0 based index. And that's how we'll do it. So this would be final step in data flow would be to audit. So like in the real world with this, when we actually do this in a future chapter, we're going to have a data flow task that loads up the text file into the rows and then maybe some error handling and some other things. And then the final step would be to audit that particular file. So we're just kind of halfway getting us there right now. So we go ahead and let's execute it and um, invalid object name. I know the problem. Um, I chose the wrong database. I chose AdventureWorks for my connection manager. So, and you can actually see it down here in the name. So I'm going to edit that to use the learnitfirst.com database. So I closed out too fast, but sure enough, here we are. Try again. It looks good. And let's take a look at the file processing history. There are, before we do that, there are four files that match our uh, mask. So we should have four rows in the table. And we do. And we can see that it was processed. Now later on we're going to do this. We're going to extend this a little bit to track error information and do some other cool stuff uh, as well. But that's kind of the basic idea of working with the for each loop and your execute SQL task. Just simply pass your parameters. Use the for each to assign the value of the variables and then pass the variables in. Like this example did an insert, but you know we could have just as easily said exec uh, add processing add file processing history in a stored procedure, and we could have had at file name equal, and so I can execute a stored procedure once per 
for each iteration, once per enumeration. Pretty cool, huh?